Hi guys, welcome to another lesson in the series Learn Electronics on Learn Electronics Repair. Okay, so this one isn't the most exciting lesson out there, but it just so happens if you're learning the electronics, you have to understand and learn what some terms mean before we can get to the interesting stuff like blowing things up or rather learning how not to blow things up, okay? So in this video, we're going to talk about current. We talked about this in the previous video and we talked about conventional current flowing positive to negative and we talked about electron flow flowing negative to positive. So we all know what current is. But what we didn't mention before is we have two types of current. We have DC and we have AC. Yeah, so are you AC, DC? Well, in electronics, these terms stand for direct current and alternating current. Okay, direct current, alternating current. What do they mean? Well, direct current is basically a continuous flow of current in one direction. So if we take a voltage source, say a battery, and we have current flowing from the positive because this is conventional current, which doesn't actually really exist because we all know that electron current doesn't flow in this direction, but we're not going to worry about that. We will find for a given voltage, we will get a certain amount of current flowing like this. And the current flowing will depend on the voltage and the resistance of the load. We did Ohm's Law, yeah? First lesson, so you should know this already. You should also know that if we increase the voltage, 18 volts, we'll get more current flowing. In this case, twice as much current. So how do we get alternating current? How do we get current flowing backwards and forwards? Well, the only way we can really get that is by having an alternating voltage. So with AC, the voltage itself is actually alternating. Okay. Here's a symbol for alternating current, by the way. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we have the same sort of circuit. Okay. And with AC, this line in the middle, this represents naught volts. So at this point, the voltage is zero. Okay. This is a graph and it's plotted against time. Let me draw it a little bit bigger for you. And on this channel, we don't really do math, but we do do graphs, okay? Not maths, but graphs. So let's draw this on a graph like so. Okay. What have we got? Well, we've got a squiggly line, okay? Let's make some sense out of it. So this index, as they're called, indices on graphs, yeah? This represents volts. This point is zero, this is plus, and this is minus. So the higher the line goes up, shows you that the voltage is increasing. It's increasing in what? It's increasing over time. Okay, so this axis is time. And that's what our graph shows. So it shows that over a period of time, the voltage goes from zero up to some maximum voltage comes back down to zero, down to some maximum negative voltage, back to zero, up to some maximum positive voltage, I should have said, back down to some maximum negative voltage, and so on. Okay? So, with an AC source, what you actually have is alternating voltage. The voltage is changing up and down. Okay? In this case, centered on zero. So what that causes to happen is as the voltage increases, the current flowing this way increases until it reaches the top when we've got the most current flowing, okay? And then the voltage starts to decrease, so the current starts to decrease, 
And as we reach zero, the current stops flowing. So at zero, there is no current flow because there's no voltage between these two points. Then the voltage becomes negative. So the current now starts to flow that way. And as the voltage becomes more negative, the amount of current increases till it reaches the peak. Again, once it's reached the peak, the voltage starts to decrease again. So the current decreases as it passes zero, no current flows. And then we go back in the positive direction. So we start to flow this way again. And you can see quite clearly that the voltage is increasing and decreasing. And it's doing it in a certain way. So at first it increases fast, then it increases slower. Then it increases fast, then it increases slower, and so on, yeah? This waveform, it's called a waveform, it's called a sine wave. And there's a reason for this. So DC voltage is generated usually from a battery, okay? AC voltage is generated by machinery. So this is generated by rotating magnets, effectively. And within coils of wiring and the rotating magnet as it spins round induces voltage into the winding. We'll talk a bit more about this later so don't worry about it too much. But the principle is that the windings are in a circle okay and you have inside here north south a rotating magnet okay that's spinning round. And I think you can see straight away at the point the magnet starts to rotate down here and it's coming down this area it's moving faster if you like across the winding that's the steep part of the slope and as it comes towards the end you're in this bit now where the angle if you like is shallower i know i haven't described it very accurately but i think you can see that so effectively what happens is if we imagine it the north pole of the magnet is moving very fast towards the bottom of the coil. But as it gets here, it slows down. And the same with the south poles up here. And as it rotates around, it's going increasingly fast again. So this is the fastest part. And it's coming slower again. And if you imagine that over a period of time, that's what causes this waveform. Okay? So AC is actually generated by an alternating voltage. DC, direct current, is generated by a static or fixed voltage. So here now, I've actually just drawn the graph of DC. So you can see in this example, we have 18 volts. So on our graph, again, this is time. This is the voltage, plus, minus. The voltage is static as long as the battery stays charged okay eventually it will drain but for all intents and purposes at any given time the voltage is static so our voltage stays on a single level now in this case it's easy to say what is the voltage because we measure from here to here and we have a voltage and it's 18 volts what's the voltage of this well there are at least three four <laughs> there's always three or four yeah there's four ways we can measure this then. so one way we could measure this is we could measure from zero to the voltage at the top of the peak okay the maximum voltage at the top of a peak and we could do the same from here to here zero to here and if we ignore the plus and minus we can say the peak voltage in any direction is whatever voltage we read at this point. Let's say this AC voltage was UK mains, 220 volts. Is the peak 220 volts? No, it's actually more than that. And I'll explain why in a moment. But that voltage is called voltage peak, VP or VP. Okay? There's another way we can measure this as well. We can measure the voltage from this peak positive to this peak negative. That's the maximum change in voltage from the positive peak to the negative peak. Now this is called VPP, voltage peak to peak. 
And you can see that is twice that. Okay, whatever that is, this is twice it. The other thing we could measure is the average voltage. Now, this is interesting. What's the average voltage of this? Well, I can tell you now, the average voltage is zero, zero volts, because in this half of the cycle, the voltage is increasing, increasing in the positive direction, okay? So that's a positive value. And then in this half, it's increasing as a negative value. And that cancels out that. So the average, if we were to average this and this, is actually zero. Yeah, the average voltage of AC is zero. It's certainly for sine waves. Does that mean you can put your finger on that? piece of wire at 220 volts if you think ah oh, well i know the voltage on here by average average voltage is zero so i'll stick my finger on it well unfortunately your finger doesn't understand average the way you understand average and if you do that you're going to go ouch you're going to get a good zap from that because although the voltage on average is zero it certainly doesn't feel like zero when you touch it but what if we want to work out the kind of average yeah the kind of average because if we imagine we have a load okay ohm's law tells us that the wattage dissipated in here is what equals voltage times current but the voltage is changing all the time the current is changing all the time okay that means that if we have for example 220 volts DC we can work out this formula and say that's how many watts and it will depend on the value of the resistor if you have a 220 volt AC well the voltage is changing all the time so at the peak the resistor is effectively dissipating the highest wattage it's getting hotter but this part is actually cooling and when it crosses zero actually it's dissipating no heat at all so we have another measurement, and you will have heard of this, RMS. means root means square. But we're not going to do the maths because we don't need to do the maths. What RMS is, is effectively the voltage in AC that will have the equivalent heating effect of the same voltage in DC. So we can measure... 220 volts DC through our resistor and say it gets to a certain temperature. Okay. We can pass the AC and we increase the voltage until this gets just as hot as that one does. Okay. And we know then that the equivalent RMS is generating as much heat wattage as that is. Okay. Without doing the math, there's a very simple way to work it out because all we need to do is we take the DC voltage, 220, and we multiply that by 0 0.7071. What a nice number, yeah? 0 0.7071. And that will give us the RMS, okay? Which is somewhere down here, a kind of average. So for our 220 volts DC, this AC needs to have an RMS of 220. Okay, can you get that? When the RMS is 220, it will generate as much heat in the load as this will with DC at 220. But you can see RMS is actually somewhere down here. Okay, so if we want to work out what the peak voltage is, well, we divide the 220 by... 0.7071 well let's have a look so 220 volts AC yeah, that one divided by 0 0.7071 equals 311 so the peak voltage of our AC 220 volts is actually 311 volts that's the peak voltage, okay? And with a sine wave with a peak voltage as high as that, it will generate as much heat as that DC at 220 would do. So that's basically what RMS is. The reason we have this 
peak voltage to generate the same heat as because during this part of the cycle the resistor is dissipating less heat the voltage is lower so it needs to effectively compensate by that so that's why we have a higher peak voltage that's the only thing you really need to know the difference between DC and RMS and it's 0.7071 you could actually if you really wanted to measure the peak to peak voltage and then this actually becomes half of this which is 0.3 five three three five but personally too complicated yeah that tells you what you want to know so now we know what ac and dc is which is the best well there is no best dc is used more in electronics ac is used more in the electrical appliances things like motors and such like a compressor in your refrigerator your washing machine electronics require a steady power supply so is dc is used for that ac is used as i say in appliances dc you can store dc in a battery ac you can't store but ac is much better at being sent via cables over long distances so AC is used to transmit power into your house, for example, from the substation. AC is also simpler to convert from one voltage to another. We'll talk about that a bit later, but that's another advantage. But that's just talking about power, yeah? And electricity is not only used for power. It can also carry data or information. For example, when you are listening to stereo music on your hi-fi, the audio is actually a waveform and it's AC. Low frequency AC gives you the bass sounds, high frequency AC gives you the top sounds. Yeah, the, the treble. Okay. Frequency, just mention it, better mention it. As well as mentioning voltage on AC, there's something else we need to measure. How often does it change from positive to negative and back to positive? From here to here, it's called a cycle. And we can measure it in two ways. One, we can measure it in time, milliseconds, microseconds, whatever. But the way we normally measure it is how many times per second does it change okay and that is called the frequency which i just mentioned before i even told you what it was and this is measured in hertz uh, hz this again hertz was another scientist who did a lot of work on the early discoveries of ac for example okay so hertz comes back to that thing with the average voltage of zero put your finger on it yeah it hurts okay <laughs> thought i might mention that so ac can also carry information analog information like audio it can also carry digital information it can run at very high frequencies very high frequency ac becomes radio waves wi-fi radio whatever so ac has lots of other uses other than just carrying power dc just carries power one last thing i'll mention on this to keep it short and we can go to detail later ac doesn't have to have a waveform like this it can be anything that's going either side of zero so for example this is a square wave it's still ac it just has a different shape waveform and we'll have a different RMS, by the way, different formula. Okay. We can also have triangular waves. Yeah, that's a sawtooth, actually, so I'd better draw the triangular wave, hadn't I? So the waveform can vary. It doesn't have to be a sine wave. And the only difference, really, would be the RMS value, the factor, would change. But you could still work it out if you wanted to. Okay, so very quick lesson. Did I forget anything? Sure, I must have done. So comments below. And I think after this lesson now, we probably have enough terminology and we understand 
electricity, enough to really to start talking about some electronic components and what they do and how we make circuits from them. Okay, so until next time, ciao for now, guys.